Hey guys, Dr. Betts here. Welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today, we'll be doing the experiment. Amino acids and proteins. Amino acids, they make proteins. Proteins make muscles and all kinds of other stuff too. They're fantastic things to work with. Today's lab, we'll be making cheese. We'll be denaturing proteins and we'll be drawing some structures from models. Just like always, guys. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get after it. Let's get it done. All right, guys, here we are in part one. So we're going to do some uh, model drawing. Here is a molecule of glycine. Here's a nitrogen, two hydrogens on there. A carbon, two hydrogens on that carbon. Let me just turn it to the little bit so you can see it. Two hydrogens on this central alpha carbon. Here's a carbonyl right here. I want to remember you're supposed to draw this in your book now. This carbon has an OH attached to it. So this is a carboxylic acid, and this is the amine. This is where the name amino acid comes from. Here's your amine, that's your amino, and your acid is right there, amino acid. This is the amino acid glycine because there's two hydrogens on the central carbon, also known as the alpha carbon. So that's glycine. Let's switch that out for alanine. Now alanine is different. Let me see if I can make it look good for you guys on camera here. I guess that will have to do. So here we have our central carbon. There's the nitrogen attached to it with two hydrogens on it. So a central carbon, a nitrogen to one side, two hydrogens. On the other side of that central carbon, there is a carbonyl and an OH. So here's my carboxylic acid right here. Here's my carboxylic acid right here. There's my amine right there. And here is my alpha carbon or you know, some people call it the central carbon. It's actually called the alpha carbon. And this is alanine. How do I know? Because on the alpha carbon, which is right here, I'm pointing at it, there's a hydrogen and a carbon with three hydrogens. So a CH3 group, a methyl group. Remember from our naming of alkanes? So here we have an alpha carbon with a hydrogen and a methyl group on it. That makes this particular amino acid alanine. Alanine has a methyl group on the alpha carbon. Okay, make sure you draw that neatly in your data sheet. All right, next, glycol, or glycol alanine. That essentially means, glycol alanine just means that there's a peptide with glycine first and alanine second. Now, here are just two amino acids bonded together and it's already gotten extraordinarily complicated. It's already much more difficult to look at uh, on this video. I wish you could put your hands on it. It's much easier if you can put your hands on it. But we're doing what we can during the corona crisis. So here we go. Let's take a look. Now, this is a peptide. So there's going to be a peptide bond somewhere. And it's right here. There's the nitrogen of the peptide bond. And there's the carbonyl. Remember, peptide bonds are amide bonds that connect amino acids. So here's an amino acid here. This is glycine right here. This is alanine right here. I know it's hard to see, but this is definitely alanine. So there's the nitrogen, alpha carbon, carboxylic acid of alanine, and there's alanine's methyl group right here. Here's the amide bond, the peptide bond, the amide bond. Amides are peptides. Uh, sorry, peptides are amides, right? They connect amino acids. It's right here. There's the CH2 of glycine, and there's the NH2 of glycine. Okay, so this is glycyl alanine. Now, the next drawing we're going to do is alloglycine, where the alanine is first and the glycine is second. Let's see what that looks like. Here you go. This is alloglycine. Now, previously, all right, we had our peptide bond right here. On this side was alanine, or was glycine. So there's two hydrogens here. Now here, there's a methyl group. So there's a NH2 of alanine, the CH, the CH3. There's my amide. And then over here is glycine. There's the carboxylic acid of glycine. There's the CH2 of glycine. And here, this is the amide bond. This nitrogen belongs to the glycine. This carbonyl belongs to the alanine. This is allyl, allyl glycine. So that's kind of interesting. We have two different molecules by joining two different amino acids. First, you can put the alanine first, then the glycine, 
or the glycine, and then the alanine. But you have, if by doing that, by just mixing the order, you have two different amino acids, which is probably one of the reasons why nature chose to use amino acids as one of its biggest building blocks. Why? Because you can get so much diversity from just moving the order around that you can make all kinds of different species, which I think is really kind of cool. All right, guys, now I get this was complicated. Please work with us on this. Please do your best. Uh, it's important that you learn about amino acids because they're very, very important in nutrition and health and health sciences and all that. So do your best, guys. I know it's, it's a struggle because it's, everything's been moved online. But you know what, guys? We're going to get through this together. We're going to work together. We're going to make it happen. We're going to get it done. And we're going to look back on this as our finest hour. I promise you that. All right, guys? All right, see you in the next part of the video. All right, guys, so now we're going to do part two of this experiment. We're going to add acid, heavy metals, ethanol, and base to four of these tubes. And the fifth one we're going to use, or the first one, actually, this one here, E1, we're going to put into hot water. Basically, we'll have egg protein, uh, egg white protein, in each of these test tubes. And now I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to this one, and we're going to see what happens after about five minutes. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five milliliters of acid. Let's give that a little shake. Let's just wait and see what happens. A little base in E3. One, two, three, four, five. Put a little alcohol in E4. One, two, three, four, five, one more for good measure, six. And I've already put the material into E5 because I wanted to make sure it was going to work. And as you can see, it got real cloudy real fast. So let's just sit and wait. Look at E4. You can already see it starting to turn cloudy. E2, you can see at the bottom, starting to get cloudy. Let's give it a little shake. E1, we haven't done anything yet. We're going to. But you can see E3, sorry, E4 is starting to get real cloudy. E2 is as well. So let's just let that sit there for a moment and work its magic. Find those st stupid molecules. Maybe you put them in the other room. I don't see them here. I think they're in the cover up there. There they are.
enough. All right, guys, it's been five minutes, and as you can see, the asset one is definitely denaturing. If we left it for a little longer, it'd probably be a lot better. The sodium hydroxide one, surprisingly, doesn't do much. There's a little bit of denaturing here. I'm not sure you can see it on the camera. Um, so I think it does denature. It's just not very efficient. So I would call this a positive denaturing test. This one I would probably declare a negative because it really doesn't do much. The alcohol, you can see, it's definitely getting cloudier. If we left it for longer, I think it would get even more cloudy. And the heavy metal one, the one that I did off camera, you can see it's extraordinarily cloudy. So, yeah, denature, denature, negative, didn't denature, and denature. So acid denatured, base didn't seem to, ethanol certainly denatured, and heavy metal certainly denatured as well. Now, we're going to cut the video here, and we're going to go do this one together. This is uh, test two one. We're going to heat this up. That's all we're going to do to it. Let's go, guys. All right, guys, here we go. Here's a uh, test tube number E1. We're going to heat it up in this hot water. Let me turn the, test, the beaker around so we can see it. We're just going to let that heat for a couple minutes, and then we're going to see what happens to the egg albumin when we do. As you can see, it's getting much cloudier, which is expected, right? If you heat up egg white, it does turn into a, a soft white solid. So egg white will definitely denature in hot water like this. It's kind of how, this, you know, how they poach eggs, essentially. All right, so now we're going to do part three of the amino acid and protein experiments. We're going to take 30 milliliters of nonfat milk, pour up 30 mils into a graduated cylinder. And there we go, just enough. Pour it into here. All right, there we go. Turn the stirring bar on. It's stirring a little bit, turn the heat on a little bit. Now it says we want to heat this bad boy up between 30, uh, 45 and 50 degrees Celsius, keeping the temperature below 50. Alrighty, so put our handy dandy thermometer in there and we'll uh, just wait until the temperature goes up. It's going to take a few minutes guys. All right, guys, that's 45 degrees on the milk. So now I'm going to add white vinegar dropwise. See it a little better, maybe if I turn it, turn it this way? Yeah, that's a little better. Come on. There's some vinegar in. And a little more. There, and I think you can maybe see this on the camera. It's starting to come out, starting to curdle. A little more. Turn that stir up a little higher. And a couple drops more. There we go. Let's let, turn that off real quick. There you go. See the curds in the whey there? Curds are the solid part. The whey is the watery part. And it should be pH 4, so let's check the pH. And that is indeed, let's see if sure it's on the camera here. That is indeed right around, oops, get that on there for you guys. Sorry guys, doing my best here. That is indeed right around pH 4, 4 and 5. So I'm happy with that. So now, all that's left to do is filter my cheese curd. We're going to do that through cheesecloth. Give me one second, let me get the camera set up and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so now we're set up to do the filtration. Let me just get my camera situated here. So as you can see, I have a beaker here, a glass funnel, and this white, meshy stuff. This is called cheesecloth. It's just literally, uh, I guess you'd describe it as gauze. It looks just like gauze, only it's, it's called cheesecloth because it's for basically filtering out cheese, getting the water away from the cheese. So here we go. I've got my cheese curd, and I'm literally just going to pour it through there. There we go. I got a stir bar in there I'll have to deal with before I weigh it. 
I'm going to grab a stirring bar remover, see if I can get it out of there. Here we go. There we go. There's my stir bar. And there's my cheesecloth. Now I'm going to rinse that with some um, volumes of water to make sure I get all the acid out of there. This is just pure water, guys. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Just pure H2O. And there you go. 30 milliliters of water gave me that much cheese curd. Now, I'm going to be fancy and I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and I'm going to kind of squish some water out of my cheese just to get uh, rid of the water mass so that when we weigh it, we have a little bit more accurate picture of what this looks like. The nice thing about cheesecloth is you can pull it out like this and you just give it a good, just give it a good ring. Now this cheese curd is really soft. It's a really soft cheese curd. It's like cottage cheese. You know, you've all had probably had cottage cheese. This is curds. So this little Miss Muffet, when she sat in her tuffet, she was eating her curds and whey. She was basically eating this. She was basically eating this. So this is what we got, guys. A nice big ball of milk protein called casein. Okay, and that's what we're going to weigh here in just a minute. All right, I'll come back. Let me get set up. I'll come back, and we'll weigh it together. All right, guys, see you soon. All right, so now we're going to weigh our cheese curd. Uh, the book says to use a watch glass, so that's what we're going to do. We could have used a weighing boat. Saved on glassware. But that's all right. It's good that we learn about watch glasses. Looks like a big old contact lens. Had to walk across the lab to get one. So here we go. Let's uh, zero out the scale. And I'm going to give you the mass of the watch glass alone. There's the mass of the watch glass alone. 62.889 grams. And now... I'm going to give you the mass of the watch glass with the cheese casein. Sixty-eight point one five three. Sixty-eight point one five three. What was the mass empty? Ah, all right. So sixty-eight point one five three. Point one four seven. One four eight. 68.148. So there's your mass of the cheese. Now you have to calculate the percent mass over volume of cheese curd in milk. All right, guys. So that's the end of this part.